it's a beautiful day in the ANU kitchen garden today. Um, we're here surrounded by our veggie beds and really, really excited to have uh, part of our ANU community here today, staff and students working in collaboration with ACT for Bees and other pollinators and the Canberra Environment Centre to create a pollinator garden to help our veggies to really thrive. So. Welcome Julie, thanks Thank you. for helping thanks us out. Everyone. We're really excited to be here, it's a fantastic collaboration and we're really excited to see how this garden can really thrive with more plantings to pollinators. So this garden has actually got a really great establishment of flowering plants which makes a really wonderful foundation for what we're going to do. Well, you go get started and right. um, we'll, we'll have a look around the garden and see what's here and uh, yep. yeah, where All we're right. going to plant Lots things. Lots of plants to plant. So now I'm just going to talk about all the different ways to make a pollinator friendly garden and uh, some of the plants that you can plant in your garden and ways to plant them that will best attract a really wide range of pollinators. Oh, beautiful! It's tree planted! <laughs> We're going to start with natives. That The native plants are what uh, the native species have evolved with. Many of these are, are really fantastic. The wild ambergia and the sticky everlasting are local native plants. So wherever you can, find a local nursery and plant clumps. So really, a pollinator particularly native bees, they've only got a, a, a flying range of about 500 metres. So we want to put things together so they can have a feast all in one spot. Then we've got the shrubs, the, the bigger shrubs, which again are calistamins and grevilleas. And also the native rosemary is really great. We've also got borage here, it's got beautiful purple flowers, they self-seed really easily and they actually refill with nectar every 20 seconds. So they are always full of bees. Those flowers will actually help the bees to come here and all dotted all the way through you'll see pumpkins and those flowers are going to help the pumpkins to grow big, right? We're going to have huge pumpkins come next year. Another essential part of a pollinator garden but also a garden for biodiversity are water stations. The bee stations um, are often good to have either pebbles, um, rocks, or whatever so that there's a landing spot for bees to land on. The other thing is really important is no pesticides. So that includes fungicides and herbicides, all the ides. So Peter Abbott, um, our local bee expert who has been studying the bees at the Botanic Gardens for a number of years, has just recently published this book. I really highly recommend you at least have a look at it and, and get and purchase it because we have so many different beautiful bees. And then um, Kit Prendergast has done this um, Bee Hotels for Australian Bees. So she's done a lot of research on uh, what bee hotels are the best for Australian native bees. These bee hotels are really long. They're much longer than the ones in the shops. And as you can see, we've got holes of um, four and six and um, seven centimetres and those are really deep. You need to have the node and then an open stem all the way. It's no use having a node in the middle otherwise you'll have to drill it out. Um, and we've also collected pithy stems. So they're all sorts of you know pithy stems and easy to cut and so reed bees really like those. They basically need to be hung up so this, as well as our planting list, are really great resources. So really for me, the journey with the bees and pollinators has been connecting more strongly with nature and making time to just go out and sit in my garden and to see what flowers are flowering and also what pollinators are there, what birds are in our garden, and the changes throughout the seasons. And this is what's been so wonderful with the ANU Thrive, to have the students coming here and being involved in this garden and, and sharing through food, but also just getting a deeper understanding of the health benefits of being in nature, of connection and, and care. So start small and then just watch what's happening and you'll be amazed by the biodiversity that comes to your garden. <laughs>